Three four, four, four. Good morning. It's good to see each other this morning. Hope you've had a wonderful week. I pray you haven't had too much wind damage. I know we had one little tree behind our house fall over. And, and uh, I think we've got some possibility some more coming, so be in prayer for that. It's hot weather, and then that usually stirs up the temperatures and storms. And Anyway, it's not a weather report. I just want to see how y'all are doing. <laughs> Partly cloudy with skies in the east today. Um, any announcements we have this morning? The fish fry. Fish fry? Saturday night. July 29th, is that right? June. June, oh yeah. Saturday just just check. Just check. Four o'clock. Four o'clock, okay. Four o'clock. Three, two thirty-three. about 4 p.m. here fish fry. Okay. Somebody has an anniversary this week. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just Thank a you. reminder for you. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> that's it. I appreciate that. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. So. Okay. You can take some flowers off the... Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be 35 years. So you need to send her some uh, sympathy cards or something like that. <laughs> Any other announcements? Somebody asked me about the little girl one in Miss Tennessee. Uh, we are friends with them. We've been friends, known them for. I knew her when she hatched out. I mean. Uh, I actually talked to her last night after the thing, congratulated her on her uh, win. She's a beautiful girl inside and out, so uh, maybe we can get her to come by and tell us about her faith before we, on a little tour or something, who knows. Can't promise that because I'm not her campaign manager, but but that's a, that's an amazing thing, a little girl from Holiday, Tennessee to win uh, Miss Tennessee, so pray for her and her family. They have a lot ahead of them. Anyone else? Okay, let's begin our service. Um, our first hymn is Song of Praise, number 117. If you'd like to stand, we'll stand, number 117. <laughs> crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge and quicken the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and life everlasting. Amen. Now we'll turn, maybe be seated in the two, uh, 337. Before I forget to, uh, I meant to announce uh, Miss Hyvell, who is our choir director at, uh, at Brown's, her beta club, they had a, they won a national championship in some of their divisions, so uh, we're excited about that. I think they got five, fifth uh, overall in their talent. So uh, if you see her, congratulate them. They're, they'll be back today, and they were really excited about how well they did. And that's really something to go out to Oklahoma and win a national championship, and that's some really talented kids. Okay, let us uh, now sing together our next hymn, number 337. Is that right? 337. <laughs>
that you give us. We pause in this service to honor you and glorify your name by giving gifts to you. We thank you, dear God, for these gifts we receive. Now bless these, the gift and the giver, in the name of Christ. so many prayer concerns and dear God we just uh, 
we uh, pray for those that feel hopeless. We pray for those that uh, feel like, Lord, their life is uh, meaningless. We pray, Lord, that you would give them a, a renewal and remind them that every life is precious and important. And God, that you never leave us nor forsake us, that you're always with us. God, we pray for all these people that are on our list today. There are so many. Those who have gone through uh, radiation and waiting for test results. For those that had surgery or waiting, Lord, for more uh, instructions. And God, we pray for them. We pray for good news. We pray for hope. And God, we pray for our church. We pray, dear God, that we would all stand boldly and proclaim your word. And dear God, we, we thank you that you love us enough to forgive us through your son Jesus, who went to the cross and died for our sins. Dear God, give us true freedom today when we begin to trust in you. Now, Lord, we pray for everyone that we've lifted up today. Lord, and those that we have missed, we ask, dear God, that you would touch them also in a special way. And now, Lord, as we pray, we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from Galatians 3, 23-29. And let us hear God's word. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us into Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all made one in Christ. And if you be in Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to his promise. And this is the word of God for the people of God. To be in Christ is to be completely set free. Freedom is something we take for granted so many times in the world we live. Uh, we, we have a great opportunity here today. Uh, you, uh, you could say uh, anything you need to say and openly and, and you wouldn't really be persecuted unless it was really something bad, I guess. But, but you wouldn't be persecuted. You'd be allowed to speak. You'd be allowed to share whatever needs you have. We've done this in our prayer time. Uh, and we have that freedom to do that. We, have the, we believe that we are born free and God gives us this opportunity to do so. And we're fortunate enough to live in a country that's also free. But when we put on Christ in our life, we begin to wear that name of Christian, it gives us another level of freedom. Freedom from something that can not only take us or uh, take our freedom away, a freedom that gives us uh, absence from something that can take our freedom away, which is sin, it gives us hope. Years ago, I was listening to a radio station, and uh, some of you probably have heard of Dave Ramsey. He's a financial peace guy, and he knows his stuff, and uh, he's been through bankruptcy a couple of times and came out wonderful on the other side. I can't imagine having to go through it one time, but he went through it twice and he was able to come out on the other side. And one thing he says during his speeches, he said there is no real peace except through the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. And he said in order to be free, you have to be um, not, not bound to the lender, he says, or you're, you're a prisoner to the lender. And so he encourages people to, to not only uh, uh, save money but to be smart with their money and so that they won't be bound to the lender but he tells a story about this elephant and he says this elephant had a chain around its leg and he said it was it was a small chain he said there was no doubt that the elephant could 
easily pull the chain away from and be broken loose and take off and be free. But he said instead the elephant stands there with that chain around its leg, contained to that post. And someone asked him, asked the, the caretaker of the elephant, said, why is it that elephant remains there with that small chain around its leg? He said, you see, when that child was young, I mean, when that elephant was young, we put a very strong chain around its leg, a big, heavy chain, and it became accustomed to that heavy chain, and it knew no matter what it pulled, how many times it pulled, it could never turn loose from that chain. And so as it grew older, it still assumed that it couldn't get loose from that chain, and so it stayed in its place. Satan would like to put a chain around you today, He'd like to put one around you at a young age and encourage you to not break free from that chain. He'd like you to stay in your sins. He'd like to stack you to stay bond to those so that as you grow older that you'll not resist sin's temptations and you'll continue in sin. So as you grow older, that chain of sin around you will continue to hold you. I believe that's where we are in society today. We've allowed this chain to be placed around us. And instead of pulling against the tide of the world, or maybe causing waves, we say, I'll just stay content where I'm at with sin and not offend anyone and not cause problems. But Jesus came, and he came in the cross of Calvary, in the way of the cross of Calvary, and he died for us. And one thing he says, the first thing I'm going to do is, is we're going to break the bonds of sin. Amen? Amen? Amen. If y'all not awake, we'll go another hour. It's up to you. <laughs> but the bonds of sin that hold us, and so he, he comes, and what does he do? He overcomes the cross. He overcomes the grave. He overcomes death. He becomes and he says there is no victory in that grave for I have come forth. And he breaks those chains and he sets us free. And then we are truly free. It's not just an imitation free. It's not just saying, well, I'm a little bit free. But when we accept Christ and we put on our faith in him, those chains are broken. It says in verse 24, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. And we have those rules and directions to bring us. The church has established doctrine to show us in the way to come to Christ. But once we accept that faith, we don't have to worry about the rules and the regulations because we live in by Christ. The rules and regulations are important. They get us to this place. But we accept Christ. We don't want to break those rules and those regulations anymore. We don't want to go against the way of God. But we want to live as the children of God. Why would we want to hurt God? Why would we want to go against God? Why would we want to sin against our brothers and sisters? Why would we want to do anything that is contrary to God's way once we accept the faith in Jesus Christ? Because when we do, what do we do? We put the chain back on, don't we? We put the chain of sin back on. I have rumors that this morning that somebody said there was a, a letter in the paper. Is it in the Jackson Sun apologizing? Is that where it's at? Or Memphis Appeal? Or? Jackson Sun. I, I, I didn't read it yet. I went to visit a church member yesterday and they, they gave it to me and I haven't read it yet, but I know what it says. And I, I'm disturbed by that and I will respond to that uh, in my own way, but I, I want to say to you, when we start embracing sin, when we start condoning life that's outside of the Word of God, we're putting the bonds of sin back on. We're putting those chains back on our legs. 
See, Jesus came and he uh, destroyed those chains. He didn't just break the links, but he destroyed them. And he said, don't put these chains ever back on again because you belong to me, not to the world and not to sin and not to Satan, but you belong to me. You are my children. And therefore, don't go back to the way you once were. So when I hear about things in the paper that say I apologize for sinning or apologize I've offended someone because you want to sin and I don't want you to. I say that's a mockery to God. It's a mockery to Jesus Christ. There's even places in the world right now where people are getting arrested for standing up and telling the truth. Well, I hope they got a lot of bread and water. Amen. Because that's what it means. I'm not going to give up on Christ. If that offends someone, I'm sorry, but toughen up. Amen? Amen. I get offended all the time. You know, and, and so I, I mean, I, I just have to live with that. But I know if I'm wrong, then I have to correct myself. I have to get myself back to where I need to be with Christ. If I'm not living out the life before Christ I should, then I have offended God. And that's the one that's important to worry about. We are children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. When we were baptized in Christ, we put on Christ. When I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior and the pastor took me down to the river and he said those words, do you accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? And I said, yes. And he said, will you follow him? And I said, yes. And he said, will you do whatever you can to depress against the evils of the world? And I said, yes. And so now I have to live, I live out my faith that way. Not ashamed, but boldly coming before the throne of grace and saying to God, I know I've sinned and I have fallen short of you like we all have, but God, I don't want to go back and put those chains back on. And I don't want to encourage my brothers and sisters to do the same. But instead, God, help us be free Set us free from the bonds of sin. Set us free from the things that hold us down. You certainly wouldn't want to jump in the water to swim and, and put a 10-pound anchor around your leg, would you? You'd take that anchor off and you'd swim freely and you would enjoy that ability to swim and do the things you do in the water. But if you put that anchor on, what's going to happen? You're going to sink. And the church's demise, the church's brokenness is going to be elevated whenever we put that chain back on of sin and say to the rest of the world, God, you were wrong. Amen. Amen. I may get wound up this morning. If I do, y'all just call Browns and tell them I'll be there in a little while. But I'm, I'm passionate about this because... I wanted to rid my sins in my life. I still want to do that. I, I still sin and fall short every day. and I have to ask forgiveness every day. I put on Christ, but I still underneath there is this broken frailty of a human flesh that we still make mistakes. Now, do I want to promote my sin? No, I don't. Instead, I want to say, God, cover my sins with your blood. God, cover my sins with your righteousness that I might be one in you. If we be in Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to his promise? Jesus said if we bring our burdens to him, he would remove them. He would remove our sins. He'd make us white as snow. He remember our sins no more as far as east and west. It'd be like they were put in the depths of the ocean. And we would be forgiven. Maybe we're not perfected yet. As Wesley talked about going on to perfection, he meant that we were always constantly trying to do more in Christ. We're trying to become who God wants us to be. But let us not turn back. Let us not go back to the ways of sin. Let us not go back to the place where Jesus first found us. But let us go to where Jesus is. I am free indeed today, not because of any deeds I have done, but because Jesus set me free. It was Jesus who came and he broke those chains that were on my legs called sin. He set me free 
And I don't ever want to be prisoned up again. Do you? I mean, ever again. I want to remain free in Christ. That I can say from the depths of my heart, God, thank you for loving me so much that you went to that cross of Calvary and gave your life so I can be free. Free. No more in debt to sin, but in debt to Christ who will set me free. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let's pray. Father, I praise you today for your mercy and grace. God, I praise you for loving us so much that you set us free. God, let us run freely from sin. Let us allow the chains that wrap around us to be removed and be broken. Let us be one with you. No longer are we ashamed of our faith. No longer do we apologize for your love and mercy that was great enough to save us. But Lord, we invite others to embrace your love and mercy and grace and to let the chains that wrap around them go and be free indeed in Christ. Lord, if there's one here today that does not know you as Lord and Savior, that one that suffers or struggles with sin, I pray, Lord, that you come to them and remove those chains and let us be free. And we'll thank you and we'll praise you and we honor you in the name of Jesus. And amen. Our invitational hymn is number 580. I invite you today, if you'd like to come and pray, if you have something on your heart you'd like to lift up before God, I invite you to do that. Number 580, as we stand, lead on, O King Eternal, as we sing with the freedom that Christ gives us. Let us stand.
Thank y'all for reminding me of my anniversary tomorrow. That will keep me out of trouble for a few more days. <laughs> and, uh, again, thank you, Miss Nancy. You always do a wonderful job. Let us pray again. Gracious God, we leave this place now. Going to Sunday school, we are thankful that, Lord, you allow us to be faithful no matter what. God, we know that if we was to lose our life for your sake, that, Lord, we'd be restored. Whatever we give up, Lord, we know, Lord, you would give tenfold. Now, Lord, bless this congregation. Send us forth with your word into the world that needs it, that we might proclaim peace and proclaim freedom through Jesus Christ. In his precious and holy name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.